Alberto, Alberto Zuccoli. Uh, I wonder if uh, one parameter uh, deciding what is democracy and what is not uh, is uh, about uh, the power. Uh, how power is shared, how power is created uh, and uh, can uh, circulate uh, uh, rapidly, or how power is frozen uh, in the hands of very few people. So, uh, in, in, in my question is that uh, it's not so much a democracy, not democracy, but it's about, uh, because they are just names, uh, uh, it's about uh, power, how individual power, how economic power, communication power, and uh, also <coughs> how human rights uh, are held uh, as uh, a divide. Do individual rights uh, exist in some uh, aspect uh, in history and even now. We have no personal rights, the state always. Uh, and also, how is the, com uh, the state uh, uh, composed? For example, in the fascist states, uh, we have the state, uh, the fascist state, uh, religion, the official religion, uh, and capital. In Marxist Lenin, it saw three dividing and competing powers. Uh, in the Marxist Leninist, uh, or so called Marxist Leninist uh, dictatorship, uh, you have uh, the state uh, that also have uh, the official religion, which is dialectic and materialism, uh, and uh, you have a capital that is. Uh, only the state. By the way, I'm not uh, an expert, uh, but I'm told uh, that uh, in uh, uh, Marxist-Leninist democracy, uh, uh, Marxist-Leninist, excuse me, the pun, uh, Marxist-Leninist di dictatorship, uh, you have uh, only another uh, informal counterpower, mafia. In Russia, if I was not uh, wrong, it was Chechenia mafia. Uh, but of course, mafia we have also in so-called democracy. Italian mafia has been exporting <laughs> itself uh, all over the world, and nowadays uh, I'm sure in Russia as well. Uh, but uh, you know, and last, uh, what in the preface uh, Winston said, uh, which I thought was relevant. Uh, which forces shape uh, phenomena where Adolf Hitler, a monster, was uh, democratically elected, a fruit of democracy? What uh, phenomena shapes uh, that uh, I'm told that in uh, Russia still a lot of people love uh, the image of the father of the country, Joseph Stalin. Uh, and how come uh, we have uh, uh, in uh, other country the idolization uh, of what we would call monsters? So uh, what is the social construction uh, behind uh, those uh, shape uh, of uh, government, uh, but also they are kind of uh, religion. Uh, I'm uh, Arti Pachori. I was chairman of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now I'm responsible for two organizations. The first is the POP movement, which stands for Protect Our Planet, focusing on youth all over the world. And there was some reference made to youth earlier, and the World Sustainable Development Forum. I'd like to follow up on what Alberto has said. Uh, the whole issue of uh, 
sharing of power. Democracy as it came into existence and was practiced essentially focused on creation of income and wealth for everyone. But what has happened over a period of time based on the manner in which democracy has evolved is that centers of power have developed which are coincidental with centers of wealth, ownership of wealth. Now that to my mind leads to two issues. One is the issue of intra-generational equity. Is everybody getting equal opportunities, equal rights? And far more important to my mind, intergenerational equity. The youth of the world are really going to have to pay a very heavy price for the enormous increase in consumption and the creation of waste and environmental damage that they have brought about, including the destruction of the global commons. So I think when we're talking about the achievements of democracy, <coughs> I'm an imposition on this conference because I wasn't planning to attend it, but uh, Gary has been very generous to allow me to sit here at least in the afternoon today. After that, he's going to throw me out. <laughs> uh, but I, I think um, when we're looking at the future of democracy, we possibly should look at the achievements of the past in relation to what is required for the future. And to my mind, these are aspects that we need to focus on. And how do we ensure, you know, I love that first slide that you showed, Dr. Um, of the child putting a flower on the gun. I think we really need to consider how the youth of the world who have progressed far beyond where we were at that stage in life, uh, how their interests could be protected through the exercise of democracy that looks at not just the present and the maximization of consumption in the present, but ensuring that we leave behind a planet that gives an equitable opportunity to the coming generation. To my mind, that's an extremely important issue which must frame the evolution of democracy that suits the needs and the priorities of the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is the yes. term democracy? What it does mean? Starting from the old Greece, which was not a democratic country. And we always say democracy came from the Greeks. Up to achievements of democratic yes. movements uh, such that we live in the society which is rich with inequalities as never in the past. So, what is the democracy if we live in the tremendous inequalities? By the tradition, it's just not. Inequalities come from the power. I agree with you. Different sorts of power. In my view, the probably the most important power which affects democracy today is technology. I will talk on that on that session. We are not aware of the knowledge and effect of the knowledge to democracy. I don't believe in democracy. I believe in the society which would be in protocols and in institutions. How much they are going to practice democracy, and how we consider it today, that's another question. It, with 10 billion people, it's not possible to have any classical democracy. So I think we have to change uh, many, many opinions on democracy. I do agree that human are, rights are written. The right is one just uh, approved two years back. That's uh, right on the uh, healthy environment by the UN. But human rights are not practiced equally. That's a great issue. Everything is practiced unequally in this world. My country can't practice human rights in the same way as Italy or states. Uh, don't, uh, uh, not to say that some African countries can't practice human rights even on the very low level of my country. So we are li living really basically in a very uh, unequal society. And democracy is nothing to do with that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Could you please, Eric? Eric. Yeah, also many things have already been said beyond these ideas of equality, law, and things like this. Many uh, 
uh, arguments were on the distribution of power linked to the distribution of wealth. So, you know, you can think and speak about equality uh, in political uh, uh, in the political sphere if you don't have the economic needs it has no value so uh, for this reason I will refer to the second uh, presentation which uh, originates from the Enlightenment mm -hmm. it is uh, freedom equality and solidarity <coughs> and I think this is the right framework to discuss uh, the question in how far we have freedom of people who has equal properties they don't have it's very unequally distributed so the second one is the exchanges equality if you have a different endowment economic endowment you cannot have equal uh, exchanges because you have always a monopoly you have power in the exchange processes, you can set prices, you can uh, uh, buy votes, you can uh, uh, establish law which is in favor of the property. It is not neutral our property. And uh, solidarity means that you give the poorer as a good person something which is not democracy. Democracy means to have, everybody uh, has to have uh, an endowment, is, is not bound to have some gifts from the other persons. So uh, what has been said already in different uh, 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 remarks, I think the question of inequality is the most important. We can speak about many things. Uh, and we can be, uh, be good persons, we can have empathy, but if we don't have any uh, uh, means to implement one preferences into society and in local activities and so on, though you are lost more or less. It's the question of social power, as uh, Alberto said already, and tomorrow we will uh, deepen this question. Uh, I think the question of democracy is the question of power. And it's not uh, something what concerns goodwill or uh, <coughs> equality, demanding equality. You cannot have the, uh, equality if you don't have a certain minimum of endowment in economic terms or in political terms. And this is true for the medieval ages, for aristocracies, and uh, for any kind of uh, uh, organization of the society, and therefore also for democracy. Democracy without an equal distribution of means, whatever the means are, uh, is uh, just uh, the illusionistic perspective. The problem of inequality is essentially the problem of reducing the capacity of human beings to make choices. In other words, the less equal you are, the less choice you have in the things that affect your life. Uh, but you had raised the question of the uh, Enlightenment principles, solidarity and so forth. Uh, but in 1941, Roosevelt and Churchill uh, expressed the war aims of the Allies in a document called the Atlantic Charter. Mm -hmm. And there are four freedoms there, freedom of speech and expression, freedom of conscience and belief, and the most troubling, I think, the freedom from want. Freedom from want doesn't mean equality, but it, it, it approaches the question differently, and we might want to clarify how freedom from want augments or diminishes the idea of democracy. And the last one, of course, is the freedom from fear. But uh, in my opinion, the evolution of the UN system and 
constitutional expectations that evolved from that uh, uh, are essentially the social democratic compact. Okay, and that is what I think is under threat. Thank you so much. Yes, Alexa, it's your thank turn. You. Thank you very much. Just a couple of things. First of all, I think that the biggest problem uh, with the democracy is that modern civilization has been trying and mostly successfully to turn it into, into a milky cow. I mean that uh, converting principles into instruments that has happened recently is exactly the problem of the today's crisis of the democracy. And in that sense, I want to say that uh, I disagree with the position that democracy is about power. Politics is about, is about power, not the democracy. Democracy is exactly about how to bridle this power, how to make it less contagious for the people. Uh, and uh, uh, also I would uh, say that uh, uh, if we will uh, uh, think about the biggest thinkers of not so long ago, I mean, for instance, uh, John Stuart Mill, I mean uh, Alexis, Alexis the Duckler. And we forget, we simply forget that they warned about the traps that we have successfully got into on our way. Because Tocqueville was speaking, and by the way, Mill also was talking about the tyranny of the majority as one of the problems of the representative democracy. And uh, actually, both of them were talking about the competition and struggle between equality and freedom in the society within the democratic instruments. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that will sound also in disagreement with many positions. I see that it is equality that has eaten our freedom. This is the big problem, not vice versa. I'll give you an example, practical example, because equality, equality was considered always and as equality first of demands by Rousseau and then only as an equality in front of the law. We are born different. We are not born equal. That's nonsense. I don't know. Somebody is born in the United States, like Gary, uh, somebody in Germany, I was born in Russia. Compare, are we born equal with the Syrian, born in Syria today? It's nonsense. We should have e uh, equality in front of the law. Yes, I agree to that. But unfortunately, and by the way, Tocqueville, uh, 200 years ago, was, uh, was writing about that, saying that America, and it was in 1835 that he wrote his book. He said that America is one of the least free countries. And I think this is exactly what exists today. Just imagine. Can you imagine in any university, society, starting talking in support of, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the sexual giant and his story? Will the, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Can you imagine talking about that? You will be immediately ostracized. I am not supporting, I am not trying to justify, but the fact that there is no freedom, even of the opinion, because the majority has already shaped its opinion, is a dramatic deficiency of the modern world. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please. Adam Konyshevsky, Geneva Center for Security Policy and also the Bridge Foundation. Um, I have two points. One is the link between democracy and education. And in fact, it goes both ways. Perhaps education was necessary to have a democracy, but also perhaps democracy allowed for universal education. Why is this so important? Uh, 250 years ago, you had the aristocracy. They owned the land. They owned the serfs. The serfs worked for the rich, and that's the way it was. They did not have access to education. The rich had education. They had the power, and they ruled the world. They ruled the place. 
this process of revolution allowed these people to have access to be able to read, to write, and this is what supported democracies, and they flourished, at least for a while. So there's a link between education and democracy, and, and we should, and that's also perhaps one of the achievements, that's the topic of, of today's session. The other aspect is young people, and I'm so happy that Patchy mentioned young people and that it was mentioned also in the beginning. We're talking here about the future of democracy. Young people are the future, and so young people should be at the center of these three days. Um, we discussed this with Gary, and, and also I prepared a, a little something on young people and democracy. In some countries, 70% of the population are young people. So if we don't consider them, if we don't bring them into the, and if we don't give them the tools in order to be able to govern themselves, in a democratic way or in a new form of democracy, then, then where are we going? Thank you so much. I would, very, I would like to appreciate what you said in the beginning about Stalin and 9 million of Ukrainians killed. Because mm -hmm. Ukraine was really Timothy Snyder, you never wrote it. The deadliest place of the world between uh, 33 and 41 mm -hmm. or 44. Uh, then, uh, but it's not about Ukraine, of course, not going Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we went to Stalin and Georgia, but we went to Georgia and Georgia. You are about education, yeah. so you are number one here. But, uh, Gary, I would like to use, as you said, it's very good to give examples. But I would like to comment also on Alberta's speech, which I like a lot. Alberta, about talking about Mafia. It's interesting because Chechen, it, it's not in Russia, it's not about Chechen mafia, not at all. It's about KGB mafia. They were Straight most mafia. powerful uh, and they were organized. For me, it was a, I had no idea that he said Natalia, but it was the most powerful mafia in the US, was Irish. I said, oh, no, Italians said, no. First, we're Irish, and then, but Italians were much more. At the beginning, now. At the Albania. beginning, we're Irish. Now, well, I, in the beginning, I'm talking about the beginning, but but uh, uh, Italians were much more better organized. That's why they are well less less now. But talking talking about mafia, which is about power and distribution of power, uh, is to, just to give an example again. Gary, you remember Konstantin Grish, right? The guy who was minister of foreign affairs. So and you know all know about Yanukovych. Who are Yanukovych, oh, yeah. our yeah. bandit president, who yeah, is yeah, yeah. 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 So, so this is my friend, he was minister, all four days, they had this big discussion power. So what is a, a name for you? For your power. But what does it mean? Does it mean money? Money. Well, he was kind of simple. <laughs> maybe money, maybe just to be president. And to have absolute power in terms of, of money. army, money. forces, etc. So it's all a matter, you know, for different people. Probably it's a, it depends on the place you sit. But again, talking about mafia, etc., etc., and about the, the biggest question we are discussing now: democracy. I, I also I agree with you completely. There are so many definitions of democracy. So it's is it the, the biggest question for us? Answer: What is democracy, or is it? Okay. I think the biggest achievement of the democracy is we do not have slavery anymore. And why in the classical way, sure, that's what I look at. But, but the United States, in Russia, you know, that's a problem. That there. What is the difference between my country and Russia? Because they had slavery, it was a very, they almost never had slavery, just for a brief period of time. But they had slavery on a huge, huge scale. And it was horrible slavery. And slavery means resentment. Talking about Nietzsche and you know, politics and resentment. And if I'm a slave, then I accuse everybody here. You're all wrong. And of course, I will be aggressive, I will be arrogant, I will be whatever. This is the tool which are populist using now in the big, big scale game. And second, again, I give us our colleague from Switzerland, right? It's all about education. If I can read, at least I can know my rights, and I, I can follow, uh, follow well, obligations of the laws. So for and then, democracy gave an access to education to a huge amount of people for the last few centuries. So now, and for me, the most critical and crucial question for humanity is how do we put education 
as Gary loves to say. How do we change education radically to be on the state of art of the modern world? Okay. Thank you so much. I like very much your previous comments uh, that uh, I'm lacking a little bit of frames because I imagine that the first uh, session is devoted to framing the, the, the democracy the notion. So I would like to point out that uh, uh, there are two ideal systems. Uh, one is uh, democracy and the second one also ideal is authoritarian, autocracy if, if you wish. Uh, all that we have uh, in reality is something in between. So it means that this is a changing phenomenon. They're uh, sometimes going towards uh, demo more democratic <coughs> solutions or some, sometimes to more uh, autocratic uh, solutions. But how comes? Uh, uh, as uh, Mommy pointed out, Mommy, I'm uh, referring to you, doesn't hear, uh, that uh, our planet is extremely crowded and will become even more crowded in the future. Uh, so we are competing for resources uh, that are important to our lives. Uh, how we uh, do compete? Uh, we, we are diversified because uh, the large number usually goes into splitting into bigger groups. And those groups, uh, Marx uh, called classes, and uh, uh, he distinguished two, two classes. Uh, nowadays, uh, contemporary sociologists like Bourdieu uh, divide them into three groups, uh, low, mid, and uh, high income. So the income uh, creates a sort of patterns of behavior. But uh, it is not enough uh, because all those uh, classes are not only divided by economics, uh, they are also divided by culture. So, uh, so they, they may be low income, but uh, highly skilled and, and so on. So, so it's a much more complicated uh, picture. But if we speak about uh, those uh, three uh, groups, uh, that uh, uh, low, uh, middle, and, and top, you call the, the elites uh, or the, um, the names are different, but, but, but whatever. Uh, their specificity uh, in the dynamic uh, uh, moves uh, uh, puts them into totally different processes. So for instance, if the low income and the low culture uh, is um, prevailing, then evidently we will have revolution. But what happens in, if those proportions go into, into other ways? Uh, the key issue, however, is the distribution. Uh, distribution of power, distribution of wealth, distribution of uh, access to uh, attractive uh, um, uh, goods or um, uh, other values. Uh, and uh, uh, with this uh, the distribution, uh, uh, again, uh, we have a social dynamics, uh, social, political, environmental, so with immense impact. So I will claim that there is no just uh, uh, perfect democracy or perfect autocracy. Always uh, we should adopt the contingency approach, looking for what uh, type of power, what type of governance, what type of processes will lead us to satisfying, accepted by others, uh, uh, solutions so uh, enable us for, uh, uh, for, um, for living together <laughs> on one planet. Thank you. Thank you. I am Marco Tiello, I'm a student at Comatre University. And talking about uh, equality and education, I would like to give you an example coming from my life. And I come from a wealthy family uh, in Italy, obviously. And they gave me the opportunities to study all my life without worrying about a thing. On the other side, there is my best friend, and he comes from a very poor family, and, and he always wanted to study, but he could never do that, because he didn't have money and time. Like, he literally had to work all of his life in order to help his family with the bills. And I'm very happy because now he succeeded in life anyways. And he's thinking about uh, going back to university now, now that he has the chances. But that's why we shouldn't talk just about equality, but we should talk maybe about equity. Like me and my friend, we did, we were equal before the law, but we still had different opportunities. So how can democracy um, achieve equity? That is my question. Thank you, Marco. Thank you so much. <coughs> now, I think it's 
I think one of the achievements of the achievement session is declaring that there is no form of government called democracy. And I think this is very important because Americans talk about democracy like it's a form of government. And um, it is a republic. All the official documents repeat America is a republic. So we have republicans and uh, republics, monarchies, and tribal structures, which are all active today. And we have to consider them because we, uh, we want to acknowledge the presence of Saudi Arabia and run and get checks from Saudi Arabia and so on. But it's a tribal uh, community that has succeeded in joining the global world and the economic world, and it's the richest. So um, this is one point, that I wish we would communicate to the public, even if we use Facebook, to say that there is no form of government that is a democracy. So we go from the deification, in order to talk about its achievements, and from the comments here, we go from deifying and reifying democracy into constituent principles, like many of you said, equality, power, and so on. And I agree in terms of equality has the same problem. And equality is so abstract, and it's so inclusive, we, we can disagree forever that there is equality or there's no equality. But if we talk about, I like equity, but I prefer access to. So access to equal access to resources, equal access to <coughs> education, equal access to power and governance, equal access to law. But of course, you can't really put people in chains and pull them to have access if they're not going to go to school. When school is provided, we, you know, uh, we turn into putting them in prison, and then you talk about dictatorship. So, so there is uh, providing and then teaching uh, the people how to uh, the privileges of doing that, showing them actually, not teaching them, showing them, demonstrating the um, privileges and advantages of how, when you get this access, it improves your life. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, here, I, I will come to you, but first, you will please, yes. We Thank are you. Ivo Gergav, uh, Global Roundtable Croatia, yeah. from Spain. Uh, we are ab about uh, achievements of democracy. Uh, it's, it's no it's no question it's no question about what the democratic regime so the, the democratic political systems or if you can say democratic government achieved through the history uh, this uh, this meeting is about uh, why we are facing siege why we are facing questioning the democracy today as the efficient uh, way or system of uh, functioning societies and global function. Uh, I would stress uh, the three things that are still on, on our, uh, on our uh, uh, focus. Can peace be maintained? It's not just the question for democracy, it's a question for all other types of uh, behavior or values. Because do we have a peace today? Yes, in some countries, in some parts of the world, maybe we can see in the, in the, in the biggest part of the world we have peace. But uh, we are in global world. And uh, several wars we are we are witnessing today are also our wars. That are the wars of all democratic systems that exist today. So that is about uh, the the accuracy or the importance of today's discussion. 
what are the achievements of democracy. They are achievements, they must not be neglected or a question at all. But we are facing the, today's world that is uh, without peace. Somebody or majority would agree that there, there were no history without wars. Second, prosperity for all. Well, they are countries, national country, national nation state, they are part of the world, where we can speak about prosperity for majority, let's see. But obviously, we would agree, no prosperity for all the world, and even in in any country. So that is about the second goals. But these are the goals, not only for democracy, and well, it's also the same with social justice. So actually, the, 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 the main value of democracy, as uh, Alexander said, is how to, to organize, how to limit the power, we are speaking of political power, in the interest of the people, in the interest of all citizens. That is democracy advanced. In today's technolo technologically advanced world, communication probably would not be a problem as it was previously. So I think we, we, we can agree that uh, it can be improved in many senses. Education is achievement of democracy. I agree totally. But still, it is, it is far from uh, adequate education for today's world, for the global world. Thank you very much. Thank just you so much. <coughs> yes, please, you have some yeah, um, comments? Yeah, I just uh, would like to, we, we had a, a wonderful session here two, two years ago about social power, mm -hmm. where uh, we discussed all the forms and where was it vested. And uh, we finally came out with a nice classification of uh, uh, places of social power, uh, and one of them, of, of course, the institutions. And uh, talking about power will make us end in, in the institutional framework. And that's why uh, some institutions can be, uh, have a more democratic character and other institutions a less democratic country, uh, less, less democratic ca uh, character. And for instance, I can tell you, my country, uh, which, which is a, uh, a republic and it's ruled under democratic principles, has itself started um, producing uh, institutions uh, that are very difficult to classify as having a dem being oriented by democratic principles. It's the, the Assembly of the Republic, which is the, the siege of democracy, uh, who, is, who is, uh, uh, has approved that, uh, which are the regulators. So each, um, each uh, big market has now a regulator, uh, which was a function that previously was allotted to to the director generals, to the ministries. But now, because of the rules of competition, of, of, um, uh, of um, uh, free competition inside the European Union, we have to take them out of the state machinery and allot these, these areas to be regulated by regulators, which are autonomous bodies. They are, uh, people are nominated by by the Assembly of the Republic, they are autonomous. They respond only to himself, to themselves. And also, what happens is that they are ruled by laws, laws who are transcribed from the general um, competition rules of the European Union. Well, what does it mean? It means that, uh, in fact, we are having uh, different uh, this is the, uh, sort of disaggregation of what, what's going on. And that confuses the, the, whole, the whole issue. So <coughs> I, I agree that, in fact, power and, and, and socialism, we have to look at that, as well as to the, the issue of property. 
all thinkers from the from the very beginning <coughs> in the 18th century have said that the the the, so, the main source of, of of inequality is property and loss of property and endowment. So you know that's something that uh, to touch on it. You know, it's, uh, anyway, we are talking about achievements and one very good achievement that uh, I uh, I noticed uh, from uh, from apart from the three was that of intergenerational. A fairness of justice, because in fact our democracies, our countries were able, uh, you know, 50 years ago and so on, to give to to to, to the young people. I, I'm one of them, you know. I'm I'm uh, I'm a product of the baby boom. Uh, a sense of the future. We had a future, and that in fact brought cohesion cohesion to our societies and. We, we wish to participate in the institutions and, uh, in, in, and, and in, the, in, in life in the country. That's why we have that revolution and so on. But, and that, in fact, uh, that intergenerational um, uh, fairness or justice is, in fact, at the moment, with all the precariousness that we see going on in, in, in the field of, of work, uh, being put at a stake. And that is, in fact, a big worry. But that's for another session, I must say. So uh, apart from peace, prosperity, social justice, I will, in fact, put another one, very important thing, which was intergener intergenerational uh, justice or, or fairness or something of that sort. Because that's the fabric of, of the future. And the future is being privatized today. Mm -hmm. It belongs to Google, to Amazon, and so on and so forth. And that's a, a big worry for us at least who, who do, uh, who do in fact, uh, foresight and strategic foresight. From uh, authoritarian and dictatorship covering the regime and democratic uh, regimes in the center of Eastern Europe after the fall of the communist regime uh, demonstrate uh, that uh, democracy carries a social price uh, which had, uh, has to be paid. Um, the Fields to Max slogan, uh, according to which economic rights should be given priority over political and civil rights. I consider this theory uh, totally wrong, as the civil and political rights are necessary at least for three reasons. To ensure uh, economic development, to preserve the social order and the rule of law. And finally, they are intrinsically necessary as they create a system of individuals, uh, values that define us as a free individuals. This uh, last uh, argument mentioned uh, touched upon a sensitive point. Which a system of uh, values is a American model of democracy. It's a single, it's a single model. In, uh, in Far East, uh, uh, outlook of the world has been shaped by Taoist uh, idea of universal harmony, by the Confucianist uh, idea of a compassionate man, and the Buddhist, uh, Buddhist notion of the universal benevolence. Um, is it compatible with the concept of democracy created by uh, Western uh, uh, European civilization <coughs> rooted as is a Judeo-Christian spirituality, Greek philosophy, and uh, Roman law? My answer uh, is uh, the affirmative of the agreement of two uh, fundamental values, truth and freedom. Uh, when uh, asked it, uh, how should I, I serve the, a prince, Confucius answered, tell him the truth even if it uh, might anger him. While the uh, Buddhist developed the idea of free will to choose. In the Old Testament, God says to man, the choice is yours. And Jesus states, know the truth and the truth will make you free. I am heading for the conclusion of a life uh, that has taken me uh, through three dictatorships, a revolution, 
that took a toll of uh, transition to democracy that has taken of toll of social sacrifices. I believe that the ideal of democracy enshrines the possibility of choice after one knows the truth. Thank you, sir. And while I insisted on the moral basis. Now, in the moment, uh, in a consumist uh, society. Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, my name is Ahmed Nori, but I use the second one. Uh, it is easier. Nori. Sorry, um, I'm a professor of international relations in, in Ankara and also a fellow of the academy. Um, I would like to contribute to optimist side of the um, session. Here. because we are discussing the achievement of democracy and uh, I think that um, thanks to democracy we achieved um, significant um, things in, in human life. Some of them are already being mentioned um, like uh, believing in equality and uh, prosperity. Although I, I'm not sure uh, whether uh, democracy um, generates uh, prosperity. Uh, because um, we have witnessed uh, non-democratic uh, governments uh, generating uh, more wealth, uh, more prosperity in, in history. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, the credit to democracy is uh, democracy in made in generation and in distribution of wealth in sustainable over time. Um, I think this is uh, what democracy assures compared to non-democratic uh, forms. Um, democracy has a uh, high chance uh, to make it uh, sustainable. Um, um, but uh, one of the things that cannot get uh, be mentioned about the achievements of democracy uh, and I think it is one of the great achievements of democracy is the empowerment of common men. The men in the street. Um, with the, thanks to democracy, common men, the men in the street um, now uh, has, has been empowered. Empowered uh, to uh, decide, empowered uh, to uh, participate. Uh, I think this is the, one of the greatest achievements of democracy. Thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> yes, now we will go with Hans. Okay, in a way, Emil already uh, preempted my comment uh, because uh, as somebody who's lived many years in Asia and I'm an Asia expert, I find that the discussion is a little bit Euro centered. Uh, we think of democracy as a product of European history from the Greeks to the French and American Revolution and so on. Um, but we don't, uh, you know, do we really want to go down that track or do we want to look at democracy as a universal concept? And if we want it to be a universal concept, we have to universalize it. We have to strip it of some of its cultural trappings. and perhaps rephrase it as a way of uh, the democratic society is a society that, that has solved the problem of power. Uh, seen in, as a universal, <coughs> how do you restrain uh, an accumulation of power in a small group that leads to injustice and, and inequality and so on. And uh, that problem is an old problem that's emerged uh, when we you know, perhaps 10,000 10, years ago, with the rise of the first city-states. Before that, we had a hunter-gatherer society almost everywhere on the planet. That's where we have our inclination to, to desire fairness and sharing and equality. That's natural. It's actually part of our hardware, so to speak, to, to desire that. And we've been frustrated ever since because in a large society you cannot have that. If you look at the Western democratic uh, 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 tradition, it's, we, someone said before, it's ruled by the many for the many. By the many doesn't work. 
it doesn't it doesn't work in a complex society. You have to have some kind of uh, process whereby things are kind of put to a point, yeah, where, whereby opinions are collected. We have representative democracy for that purpose. Um, but if you say it's for the many, well, there's many societies in Asia and Africa and elsewhere, say agriculturalist societies, more complex than hunter gatherers, who solve the problem of power in their own way without ever having heard about the word democracy and such. But they were familiar with the problem of power, very much so, a very elaborate institutions to, to stop uh, monopolies of power. So are they democratic, or what, are we, we, do we want to be world, or do we want to be European in the way we think about this? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Berger, it's your turn. Okay. I would like to agree that uh, there are a lot of money <coughs> policies in the world, and I would agree with the colleague from Switzerland that they will, at least in certain percent, persist and that will be always in our future. Uh, but at the same time, there are a lot of rights guaranteed to our equality with others. Uh, conclusion is <coughs> that uh, equalities are formal. They are formal. They have the form of the law. On the paper, with the symbols, expressed with the same, different kind of symbols in different languages, it's the same. But if equalities are formal, the real freedom doesn't exist. Uh, during our lives, we need a lot of, of illusion. It means democracy is one of the nicest illusion over the world. Uh, why, we do, why we need the illusions? Because we need to correct different kind of non-perfect things and especially different forms of non-perfect relationship between the people. We must be together and our relationships are not perfect. We need illusions to make our lives better, more nice. Uh, let me say, this question for everybody in this room and on the world. Are we real so much be beloved from the others? Are we real friends with the other people, as we used to say that friends? Just to think about these kind of illusions which persist and always will be between us. Uh, It means democracy is just one of the illusions. And let me say, and in this way, I would like to defi define now the democracy in this way. Democracy is perfect shape, collective illusion uh, regarding the, our state of freedom and equality. The function, the, uh, the function, the role of uh, uh, every illusion, including the illusion of democracy, its better perception and feeling of the personal social life as base for different kinds of activities on the way to progress. That's my Okay, comments. thank you so much. Michael Mulvey, <laughs> outreach coordinator of the Independent Constitutionalists in the United Kingdom. It's still united, by the way. Um, I shall try to be very brief. Thank you. Um, thank you, Zhao and Elif, for your introductions. Elif, in your introduction, you say, democracy is a subject of broad consensus. Well, clearly, from what we've heard this morning, it is not. <laughs> Secondly, you say, democracy is a universally recognized ideal as well as a goal. Clearly, it is not. And then you say, no consensus exists on how to define democracy. Clearly, that is largely the case from what we've heard this morning. Now, the reason for this, I believe, 
is that for 100, over 100 years, democracy, which is essentially in the West, elective representative democracy, has been put into a straitjacket. It has been confined almost exclusively to functioning as an antithesis and counterpoint to socialist totalitarianism. And this has been a major inhibiting factor in the further development of the concept of democracy. We must realize this, that we are talking exclusively, for the most part, about repre elective representative democracy. And what we really should be talking about is not that at all. It's much, much more. The bar for democracy, as a result, has been set far too low. It is now time collectively to explore it for what it could be, what it needs to be in the 21st century, and to create and to co-create its potential for better governments. I'll say no more at this point, but you'll find a lot about that in paper, I believe it is number seven, the Declaration of Purpose of the ECA. Uh, independent constitutionalist. Thank you. I, uh, I want to, to, to share with you a very short story. In uh, 1993, 25 years ago, uh, when I was the rector of Bucharest University, Senate decided to offer the title of Dr. Honoris Causa to Vakaf Habe. Uh, the title of the speech of reception of uh, Vakaf Habe was um, uh, illusion and ideas. And he said, uh, few people uh, has uh, ideas. Majority of people have illusion, like uh, uh, Professor Dragan Simonovic said. Why? Because for ideas, must to fight himself. Uh, illusion can be transferred to others. And uh, after declare unsatisfaction. This is democracy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now I need to uh, close this session. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for your very fruitful comments, contributions.